Namaste, gods, goddesses, and emissaries of light. And this is Dr. Shreya Tayin Aramathia. And if you're new to my channel, please like, subscribe, and do not forget to hit that notification bell so you can be updated on my latest and my current videos. Welcome, 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 everyone. One second. Anywho, I am back and I am starting a new series on my YouTube channel until further notice because I'm still trying to figure out where I'm at on my journey as well. But um, until I mention otherwise, we're going to proceed with Check the Vibes Wednesdays. So we're going to just check the vibes in the collective, okay? Ooh, someone ghosted you. You may be in separation from your person right now, but there is some distance. This person could be your twin flame, a friendship, a romantic partner. Duh. <laughs> Isn't this what we all came here for? Okay. Ooh. So it's like this person turned her back on you. Um, this person was disloyal to you or viewer. This could be you. Please take what resonates. But it looks like uh some walls have been put up as well in this relationship dynamic. Damn. Somebody owes you an apology. They were very toxic towards you. Drama filled. I feel like your relationship was full of arguments. And you guys are just incompatible at the time because your person had a hidden agenda. Please take what resonates. It could be you or your person. Because, you know, we have cross watchers. We have cross watchers more than not. Okay. Hold on one second. Oh, God. I don't know why I feel like cooking. It's 3.22 in the morning on the clock. But I'm hungry. And I shouldn't be eating because I'm... Fasting. The hell? Temptations, a motherfucker. Trust me. All right. So, um, you and this person may have been married and you're divorced now. May not be the case for everybody, but that's just what's coming up. Your your soul feels shattered, broken. Um, <clears throat> some of you look like this. As a failure in your life, this isn't a failure. If anything, this is here to teach you. Okay? It's showing up as something that is a lesson you need to learn from. Do you and your person need to learn from this and overcome this? Uh, adapt, overcome. And persevere. I know that's not the saying, but that's what spirit is saying. Adapt, overcome, and persevere. Okay. Um, you're like a cat. You land on your feet. No matter what happens to you, no matter what this person does to you, you just seem to kind of bounce back like an alley cat. Okay. I didn't mean for that to rhyme. But you were dealing with someone who was very arrogant, uh, very rash when it came to their actions. They were very insincere. They were not loyal. It was just a complete butthole for no reason. Ugh, I don't like your person. Sorry. I normally don't get personal when I'm doing readings, but ugh, your person got some funky energy.
for it to be you. Please take what resonates. As you are the captain of your own ship, you take what resonates for your situation. And I trust that you know your own self. Okay. Um, this may or may not resonate with you. And that's okay too. This is the reason why I do personal readings. I'm doing general readings right now for a hundred dollars. So if you just want to get a general read, um, so you can get the energy around you and your person, um, I would suggest you do that if you want to do a twin point oracle reading. If you're really dealing with a bona fide true twin flame and get your blueprint for your whole journey, those are now 250. And I'm thinking about raising the price on those, honestly, because it takes me a lot of work to do them. Um, <clears throat> you're being told by your spiritual team to slow down and smell the freaking roses. Take some time, all right? Get out in nature. <laughs> some of you are stuck in the house or stuck, stuck on a job. <clears throat> Two cards flew out. Mm, you guys need to be more intimate. <laughs> Some of you are not <clears throat> intimate with your person. I'm sorry. Throat chakra issues. Plus, um, <clears throat> I'm cleansing and it's pulling out mucus. So, listen. Um, you and your person need to get naked and do the nasty. Okay. You guys need unity. You guys need closeness. That's what's going to heal you. And really, that's going <laughs> to solve about 90% of your problems. Okay. Why you think uh, holding out and all that shit's going to help? It is nothing. All it's doing is basically causing more tension between the two of you. Whoever is withholding sex from the other person. Who's ever ghosting. Who's ever running and pulling away and all that stupid shit. Okay, so I feel a lot of feminine energy. Okay, you or your person are learning to be gentle. You're learning gentleness. You're nurturing yourself. And you're mothering yourself. Um, you're mothering your inner child. Okay, this would be you or your person. Like I said again, take a resis. Let's pull one more card and then we'll see what the Divine Mother has what messages does the divine mother have for us, Mother Mary Guadalupe? Or is this Madeline? Let me see. I think it's Madeline. No. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is Mother Magdalene. Yes. Divine uh, feminine energy. Yes, Mother Mary Magdalene wants to speak to you. <clears throat> you guys are exhausted. You're burnt out. That's what I'm feeling in the collective. You're sick and tired of being fucking sick and tired. Like, enough is enough already. God damn it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're like, what the fuck? Why can't this person just get their shit together? <laughs> No worries. It is not all in vain that you toil. Last message from this oracle is you're burned out. You're tired. You're burdened down. And you just feel empty. You feel like an empty shell right now that needs to be poured into. So what Spirit is advising you to do, beloved, is to pour back into yourself. Take away all the love. Take away all the pouring that you're pouring into this relationship and pour it back into yourself. The energy, all of it, just pour it right back into your beautiful self. Okay. Mm, I know I'm going to do that, baby, at the end of this month, girl. Boy, I'm going to that thing five again, baby. Yes, the hell I am. And I'm going to get that, um, that scrub again. That scrub got me 10 times lighter. 
and they got all the dirt on my pores. And, oh, that pool, the sauna, everything about that spa, I love. It. I love, I love, I love. Just one little treat to myself for myself once a month. Mary Magdalene, our dearly beloved divine feminine and guide, what messages do you have for the collective? What is the vibe? Ooh, the sixth power. Five. Mm. I know what that's all about before I even channel that. I already know. I feel it. <laughs> Ooh, crisis here with his beloved Sananda. Ooh, so we're going to talk about the matters of the heart with Christ. Yeah. Love knows only mercy. Come on now. Who's not being merciful in this relationship dynamic? Who's not showing unconditional love and radical forgiveness? Who in the rose? I trust divine timing. Come on now. Who's not trusting in divine timing? Oh my God. Who's being anxious? You or your person? Or both? Uh, for that matter. <laughs> I've been drinking a lot of distilled water lately. And I've been feeling so great, so good. Oh my God. I love the still water. And the last one, the skull, love has already won. You might feel like this is a dead end. You may feel like your person is never going to come around. But there is hope. Okay. Now let's get the meanings of your cards that have been laid down by the energy that consumes me at this moment, our beloved Mary Magdalene. Thank you, great mother, for your guidance, for your direction. The body never lies, okay? Six power. Someone's gonna end up having a baby or someone's nursing the baby, I'm hearing. Please take with resis, because I know a lot of you are not wanting kids or don't have kids, etc. And many of you are men that are watching. But remember, not everything is literal, okay? You could be birthed in something new. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <coughs> hmm. What the heck? Looking for a little cheat sheet and I don't think you got that in. Okay. Um. Something is telling me. And I'm always inclined to follow directions and also follow my intuition. Um, to read you a short synopsis of the Gospel of Mary. Okay. The Gospel of Mary. It says Christianity began to form as an institution in the fourth century under the direction of Emperor Constantine. Before the fourth, fourth century. Okay, hold. We just skip this. Hold on. <clears throat> now, this Christ movement by Constantine and the community, etc., the ideal embedded within the first century culture. I don't think that you heard what I said because I think I had my mic covered. Listen, women and slaves within the power structures of the Roman Empire had the least amount of personal and political power. As a direct challenge to the status quo, the Christ movement had female leaders like Mary Magdalene and Thecla teach with powerful scripture. 
containing their transformational stories. When the Emperor Constantine formed the First Council to create a formal canon or Bible for the version of Christianity, he was institutionalizing and called the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. These scriptures that provided proof of the presence of female leadership within the Christ movement were not only excluded from the Bible, they were also ordered to be destroyed. Gratefully, there were rebellious monks who refused to obey. Three copies of Mary's gospel have been found in both Greek and Coptic, buried along the Nile in Egypt. Mary's gospel revealed a very different understanding of not only who Mary Magdalene was to Christ and her spiritual authority within the earliest form of Christianity, but also a very different understanding of what it means to be human. Mary's gospel refers to the child of true humanity or the true human, which from the Greek is anthropos. This term anthropos directly translated means fully human and fully divine. So the true human is the one who is able to become aware of both at once. The true human, both a messy, limited ego and also a limitless immortal soul. See, when I follow directions, I always get that blessing. Okay, so Mary Gospel relates that Christ went through an inner spiritual transformation that allowed him to become unified, a soul wide awake and aware within the human body. This spiritual transformation was possible not just for Christ, but also for those who are willing to do the work and the difficult work of perceiving the soul, of recognizing what's real, lasting, and what's ego. Christ, according to Mary Gospel, teaches her about seven powers of the ego so that she can recognize these powers and live in right relation to them so that she can become aware of the true human being that she is as well, the treasure Christ reveals to Mary. As you'll see in this oracle, is about form of vision we can acquire. A way of seeing with the, with the eye of the heart so we can see or discern what is ego and what is soul and then take actions based on that vision. The rediscovery of Mary's gospel and this ancient form of Christianity, the Christ movement speaks to a readiness now or at least clarity of how we can relate to each other with love, which means with the shared power, a power that comes from within each as each of us equally. So as we proceed, I want you to think about something here. We are both equally human and divine. We are playing out most of us dual lives not all of us are gods and goddesses returned, but all of us are divine. That's what I want you to sit and think about for just a moment. Why I find the sixth power. Oh, God. <clears throat> they could have did better with the layout with this book, for real. Damn it. Don't even have a glossary or nothing. 
Um. Oh, Jesus Christ. So there are seven powers, and I think I'm going to teach a class on that. I also have been called to do a class on um, the psychonaut and astral travel and the nine ether way of living, which is where I'm at right now. That's how I live. Nine ether being, and I channel nine D and up. I am now in contact with beings from the ninth dimension. The great dragon is from the ninth dimension. He don't like to put a number on it, <laughs> but he is. He's from the ninth dimension. And um, I'm just in awe with the patience that he has with me. Because... I'm a little firecracker. So I've been told. This sixth power. What in the hell is that? Oh. Okay. The body. I done went past this like Three times and don't know what the hell. Okay, remember I told you I was going to talk to you guys. We were, I was going to do a class on the seventh power, but uh, the collective right now is in the energy of the sixth power, the body. Okay. The body, if we know how to listen, has ancient wisdom that extends back far beyond our own individual lives. As if the life lessons of our ancestors are encoded in the blood. A mystery woven into the molecules of light that we each are. An ever-evolving hope that we can keep moving forward with the story of what it means to be human. The body never lies. Its whispers can be subtle to many. Its wisdom can be lost to those who wish only to control the body superimposing what the ego wants, those inexhaustible unconscious requests, which are often louder than the soul. We often feel convinced <coughs> um, that it's safer to just keep doing what we've always done. What's in motion wants to stay in motion. Whether it's drinking a lot, working out too much, working too much, or constantly sitting on the couch, been watching TV episodes. This is the power that centuries later is referred to as sloth. It's a fear, I think, of having a living, breathing, moment-to-moment -moment relationship with the body when we are held captive to the sixth power. The fear of our own humanity, our own vulnerability, and our own <clears throat> mortality is so loud. We can't hear the way the soul is constantly speaking to us from within the body, when we can own and deeply accept that we are also this body, we get to experience the bliss of the other half of what it means to be human, the soul. We can have a living, breathing, moment-to-moment -moment relationship with the body that is based 
in love, not fear. We can respect the body and trust the body. Instead of superimposing what we think the body needs each day, each moment, we can ask, we can go inward, listen, and know the depths of wisdom the body possesses. Remember, the body knows how to create another body from within. The body silently knits another heart within the darkness of the womb. And the silence of the steady heartbeat of the one creating it. The body never lies if we know how to listen. Go into meditation today, tonight, whenever you have time, and ask your body, beloved body, what is needed in this moment? Because we know from moment to moment things change, right? Okay, next, Christ. It's crucial for us to remember that Christ was crucified by the Roman Empire. He wanted to turn the unjust power structures of the empire on their head, making the first last and the last first. Christ wanted to free us from the misunderstanding that any one of us had the right to put ourselves above or below another. Christ wanted to free us from the illusion that external forms of power like wealth and authority government can ever come close to the ultimate power of love that exists within us. It's crucial for us to remember that Christ wasn't Christian. Christianity came hundreds of years after Christ. Christ himself embodied a spiritual practice called kenosis, which is Greek for self-emptying love. When we practice loving someone, even a stranger, perceived enemy by emptying out all the egoic ideals about them, we free ourselves and them. We put mercy into practice. Mercy is what love looks like in action. In Mary's gospel, Peter asked Christ, what is the sin of the world? And Christ replies, there is no such thing as sin. Mary 3.3. 3. Christ here is saying that we are not innately sinful. Sin does not exist as an ultimate truth. Sin, according to the gospel of Mary, is when we mistake the ego for our true self. When we are unable to sense the presence of the soul in the midst of one of the powers of the ego, we then act from the forgetful state. Christ, in Mary's gospel, wants us to remember that being human means being an ego. With all the humanity and demands, and that being human also means being a soul. Mary's gospel relates to Christ was the Andropus, the true human being. And this is what he revealed to her. We are meant to become also the true human being. Has reunited, excuse me, has united the ego to the true self, the soul. Even in the midst of the words of what can unfold in our lives, we have the capacity to return to the limitless love we are also. How can we do this? We have mercy on ourselves. We have mercies on each other. We let love reach where it has never been before. So bring love back into the union. Bring mercy back into the union, not only for the other person, but for yourself. Because love knows only mercy. What is mercy? I already gave you the answer to what mercy is. Mercy is what love looks like in action. Love is what? Mercy is love. Mercy is what love looks like in action. Okay. 
Now we got <laughs> the rose. Is my living in vain? Is my praying in vain? Am I wasting my time? Can the clock be rewind? <coughs> of course not. The um, Clark sisters is my living in vain. Somebody is either playing a song or someone is relating to this song. You can relate. You feel like your praying is in vain, your living is in vain. Everything is in vain because things are not the same between you and your boo. Mm. Okay. Okay, spirit. Mm. My hands are itching like crazy, yo. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh my God. Mm -mm -mm. Um, yeah, so that is where you are. That's how you're feeling. You've been praying for this person. You've been tearing for this person. You've been fasting. Some of you ain't even been eating for this person. And that person still hasn't showed up yet. God is telling you to trust the divine timing, the most high. So much of our lives for so many of us is focused on what happens outside of us, on what we do or produce or don't produce. And what we produce or earn or accumulate is then linked to a sense of self-worth, a sense of purpose, and even a sense of status or importance in the world. What we have forgotten is the majesty what cannot be seen or quantified. You see, we have forgotten about cultivating a capacity to love and to be loved. We have forgot, we have forgotten the tending to the essence of who we are is our most important occupation. We have forgotten that the most powerful contribution we can ever offer is not actually something we can point to outside of us, sell, market, or frame, and put up on the wall for praise. The most powerful contribution we have to offer the world is the love we are and the love that we become. Many of us have a very clear ideal of what external accomplishments we want to achieve by a certain point in life. And if we don't live up to those expectations, we judge that we have failed. But we cannot force or contrive the co cultivation, the embodiment, and the rise of the soul. This form of soul work happens in carols which is the Greek word for the soul's timing, divine timing. Leaner time is incredible, useful for an ego to function, which is essential, but leaner time has nothing to do with the essence of who we are or what offering we can make of our lives. The rose, a symbol of divine feminine, represents an inner surrender. That cannot be timed according to the ego or any external circumstances. The rose is about remembering that we cannot force ourselves to ripen. We cannot will ourselves to be anyone else other than exactly who we are in this moment. If we accept the beauty of where we are right now, we allow the ego to loosen its grasp of leaner time. If we remember that an entire universe 
is perpetually in the process of bloom from within the heart, we can be curious about what we might be unfolding for ourselves. We can trust our own divine timing. This is what you need to meditate with your soul on. What can I trust is unfolding in its own divine timing? And it will be revealed to you. Last card from this oracle. And then we'll get some messages from your angels. The skull. Love has already won. And you're thinking that it's over. Uh-uh. 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 Uh-uh, baby. Because this is true love. This is true love. This is true love. <laughs> okay. In chapter 9 of Mary's Gospel, the powers of the ego interrogate the soul, demanding, where are you coming from, human killer? And where are you going, space conqueror? Mary 9.26. This passage is about the very real struggle for the soul to become free while in a human body. The ego fearing for its own existence confronts the soul, calling it human killer, space conqueror, fighting words. The ego resorts to name calling because it knows that the soul has already won. Love has already won. The ego dies when a body ceases to function. It, it's an ultimate reveal of how powerless the ego was all along and that inherent powerlessness of the ego is what makes it so loud and fiercely persistent while we're alive the ego knows its impairment excuse me impermanent impermanent bound to chronological time the soul knows that it continues to exist after the body ceases to function. The soul is not bound to time. It's external, it's eternal, excuse me, it's eternal. And this inherent difference between the two essential aspects of what it means to be human can help us become increasingly aware of the presence of the soul, which is an ending love within us. Practice kenosis. This is what Jesus did. Self-emptying love will threaten the ego. The goal is to release any and all attachments that the ego generates. This egoic death is the aim for everyone so that resurrection happens here in this lifetime, in this body, again and again and again. The painting by Jorge's Lautor titled La Madeline et la Feleme Felente depicts Mary sitting at a desk with a skull. She's wearing a white top, a red shirt, or excuse me, a red skirt, and a simple rope belt. At her waist that reveals she's pregnant. She's contemplating the flame that's radiating light. The skull, the new life, and her body, the flames dance, all speak to me of the way contemplating death can be liberating. The body will die as certainly as the flame will eventually burn out. But when we can anchor into what is lasting from within, what will end, we experience, we know directly that love never dies. The physical presence of Christ is missing. He's glaringly absent. And yet, she is full from within of the love that will always and has already won. Okay, 
meditation to ponder. What does it feel like to know the presence of love within me? What does that feel like? Wow, that's powerful. And in this picture, I don't see her wearing a red skirt. She has on a white gown, a long gown. I don't even see no rope around her neither. And she's holding her stomach, but I do see the skull. And I do see a chalice that is illuminating a lot of light. And then I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books that are beside her. And then I see that halo, that sun halo around her head. It's a beautiful picture. They could have made her more beautiful because, baby, this is not the best picture of Mary Magdalene I've ever seen. Anywho, anyhow, one second. Let me get the last oracle. And the last message is from your angels. Angel, you're my angel. I don't know who sings that song, but uh, you might want to go ahead and listen to it to get some downloads because that came for a reason. I'll be right back, y'all. I've been drinking a lot of water. One second. So in the interim of me taking care of you, I also have to make sure I take care of my own personal needs as well. So since we've got that taken care of, let's go ahead and get the messages from your angels. From your angels. <laughs> All right. Angels of divine light and love. From the highest realms. 
What does the collective need to know? One card already popped out. And this card is about creativity. Okay. What else? Fairy wings. Okay. So you were working with the fairy. Oh, man. What else do the collective need to know? Peace. Okay, one more last card. Oh, you're going to be pull six cards. Okay. No problem. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Well, they've been waiting to say what they need to say. One, two, three, four, five, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. All right. Okay. So your first card was creativity. Or is, not was. Your first card is creativity. Divine inspiration strikes at the most wonderful times. The angels remind you that the more you believe in your abilities and let your creative impulses out, the better artist you become. You start to feel more alive and powerful as you allow new wonderful ideals to enter your mind. Okay. So, start believing in yourself so your creative juices can Get inspired. Okay. Next, we got fairy wings. I know you see me on a video. True. What is this from? Why is this coming to me? Fat Joe. No, is it Fat Joe? Who is it? Mace? Or who? I don't know. But it just came to me. Um, look at the lyrics on that song. I don't even know the name of the song, but it just came to me in a download. Some, sometimes it happens like that. It, the message is for somebody. It sure certainly wasn't for me because I would have got it. I would have known what it was. You feel me? My inner child is happy and carefree. Actually, I'm feeling for a lot of you, it's the opposite. Do you ever feel like a lost child wandering aimlessly through life? Do you feel you've forgotten how to be truly happy and carefree? The angels ask you to play, have fun. And let go of the adult seriousness you have been carrying around all your life. Be free like a fairy. Be free like a fairy. Okay. Yeah. Letting go. What are you holding on to and why are you holding on to it? Ask yourself that question. What am I holding on to? Why am I choosing to hold on to this? How does it serve me to keep holding on to this? It's making a lot of you sick for no reason. <clears throat> mm, I'm glad. I got this. I'm telling you, I'm a doctor. So when I cleanse, I deep cleanse, baby. I do parasite cleanses. I do mucus cleanses. I do these like every uh, six months. 
I let go of what no longer serves me to make space for new beginnings. You need to let go to make room for new things. So these new things can come into your life or you must let go to give someone else the space they need to grow. Let go because holding on is too painful. The angels remind you letting go is not always easy, but it is always worth it. Let that person go. Let that situation go. Let that thing go. Please. It's holding you back. It's taking away your peace, which is your next card. And it's not a coincidence that it happened in this order. Okay. Oh, God. Nothing can disrupt my peace. The angels remind you to make being peaceful a priority in your life. Practice peace every day in quiet thought, deep meditation, or in serene action. Use the power of peace to make your life a thing of riddle and grace. <coughs> Money. I am tapped into the universal supply of money. The angel asks you cut back on your spending and get the most of your money in line with the things that are most important to you. Angel number 88888, that's 5H, y'all, is a message to learn to manage your money better as it can help you become financially secure and provide a safety net for any unpredictable situation to come. And your last card is boundaries. I am worthy and deserving of setting and maintaining boundaries that serve me. The angels want you to remember if you keep prioritizing the needs of others and ignoring your own, the things might fall apart for once in your life. Love yourself and things that please you, no matter what others might say. And that is your message. That is your reading. That was so beautiful, y'all. I like these messages that came. Um, just very powerful. Happy hump day, everybody. This is Wednesday. I hope you're having a beautiful week thus far and if not remember you always have the opportunity to change it to make it what you want it to be okay that's it that's all everybody namaste